Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. I just want to start off by saying a big, massive, warm um, thank you for all your lovely comments and kind words on yesterday's video. Uh, yesterday I uploaded uh, my segment uh, when I appeared on live TV earlier on the week where I performed a live earwax removal. So if anyone who hasn't seen it, if you uh, go to my YouTube channel or um, Facebook, Instagram, you can actually see the upload uh, from yesterday. Um, and genuinely, guys, uh, it means so much to me um, to read um, all these comments. There are literally just too many comments to respond to individually. I wish, wish I could and I will try to. But um, it's left me speechless, some, some of these comments that you've left. And um, I just want to let you guys know I'm, I really appreciate um, all the support you've shown me over the years. Um, it's, it's, it's so surreal. I actually mentioned that on when I was on TV, some of the um, um, kind of when I get recognized now and some of the comments I receive from people around the world. It's, it's just uh, I have to pinch myself. Um, and I'm not welling up, but um, I'm, I'm on that path um, because um, you guys won't know how much it really, really uh, it truly does mean to me. And um, also, I'm quite blushed by some of the comments left by a lot of the people, particularly on YouTube. Um, so thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Now, we'll just move on to the procedure and I'll explain uh, what's going on here. So this patient has got a, a, a radical um, mastoidectomy. And I will come back to that in more depth. I'll explain what that is which means that they have to have their ears um, cleared on a regular basis, normally every six months. Now, this patient was originally under the care of ENT at their local hospital, but because of all the waiting lists and backlogs, they've not been seen in a while. So they first visited me uh, earlier on in the year. And similarly to today, they had a really hardened plug of dead skin that I removed. Uh, but the patient has to travel quite a, a fair distance to, 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 to visit me at the clinic and they're not mobile themselves so they're reliant upon their daughter for um, travelling in from Northern Ireland so flying in and then um, with the family car driving down to the clinic which is about an hour away so um, although they were really pleased last time um, they decided to see if they can go somewhere more local um, which is understandable um, because um, it's a long, uh, obviously, ordeal for the daughter to travel all the way from Northern Ireland. And so they were seen by a local specialist to them, and uh, the patient found the procedure a bit uncomfortable and just asked them to stop. And um, we heard from the daughter to see whether we can then instead see the mother. And we said, it's completely fine. So um, they came, I think, early last week, and you could see this uh, large plug of um, crusted, hardened, dead skin and I used the forceps to leverage it off the floor of the ear canal um, and lurking behind that was some mucoidal discharge so I suppose more purulent more watery uh, less viscous this is more of a thicker viscous um, mucoidal discharge which is more for me typical in the middle ear and you may have noticed as I started suctioning all that mucoidal discharge there's a little perforation it would appear inferiorly. Now their eardrum obviously because it's been a, a surgically operated ear on and they've had a radical mastoidectomy their eardrum isn't your classic textbook eardrum. Some of the landmarks are not visible. I'm, I'm assuming a lot of the ossicles the middle ear bone structures have been removed or they've been diseased and decayed away. Now um, you can see that little hole there some granulation tissue just to the left about seven o'clock on screen. I just want to get as much dampness away. Now this patient will need some um, non-ototoxic medication prescribed by their doctor, so we've already written to them. Um, the reason why we want non-ototoxic is because they've got a hole in their eardrum and a lot of the common antibiotic drops um, and also orally taken drops for ear infections can potentially cause permanent damage to the organ of hearing cochlea, the cochlea, so to the little hair cells. So. Uh, we want to avoid that. So um, ciprofloxacin is a, um, also used for, as an antibiotic for eye infections. They are also suitable for ear infections as an antibiotic and they are non-ototoxic. So they're believed not to, unlike the other class of med antibiotics commonly used for ear infections to cause a permanent hearing loss. So we've written to the doctor for that. Now, 
Where we are now is actually the mastoid cavity. So what is the mastoid? The mastoid is the bone at the back of the ear, uh, adjacent to the ear canal. So in this case, the ENT surgeon has drilled away all the mastoid bone. Um, and it's, this is called a canal wall down. So just to the right is the bridge. That's where, that, that's the border, if you like, between the mastoid, where, I'm, where I am now. And you can see there's a little hill to the right. And then on the other side of that, that's the ear canal, but they've been merged together deliberately by the ENT surgeon. So why has this bone been drilled away? So two potential reasons. The patient may have had a condition called mastoiditis. That's when the mastoid bone gets infected. So the mastoid bone is um, it's, it's air-filled, it's porous, it's almost got a honeycomb structure. And for that reason, it can easily absorb a middle ear infection. So if this is the patient's right ear, just say we're going through the eardrum hypothetically, and then we turn left. When we turn left, that's the entrance. There's actually a gateway to the mastoid bone. It's called the antral uh, region of the middle ear. Um, and so if you've got a, a middle ear infection, um, when you've got uh, discharge and pus, it can enter the antral and then get absorbed by the bone. And um, so that can lead to mastoiditis as an infection and inflammation of the mastoid bone, which can be quite dangerous because this Infection can then spread upwards towards the skull base, um, it can lead to meningitis, a brain absence, abscess, and potential death. So um, that's one of the reasons why ENT may have drilled this mastoid bone away, because the mastoid bone is completely infected. Another reason could be this patient may have had a cholesteatoma, so a cholestia or middle ear cholesteatoma to be more specific. A cholesteatoma is a dead skin plug or cyst, and it's self-growing, and as it grows, um, it can become very destructive. So the cholesterol typically forms when the eardrum is sucked inwards in the attic. So the eardrum, uh, the top section of the eardrum is called the pars flaccida and the bottom section is called the pars tensor. And the pars flaccida is not as rigid, it's not as taunt as the pars tensor. Therefore, if you suffer from negative middle ear pressure, which basically means the air pressure behind the eardrum is below the air pressure in the ear canal, and that's often due to a blocked eustachian tube, which is the pressure equaliser in the middle ear, um, it creates a vacuum behind the eardrum, and the eardrum gets sucked in. A bit like when you're on an aircraft and you're descending on the plane. Your eardrum gets sucked in, and because the pars flaccida is not as rigid and as taunt and as tense as the past tensor. It's the normally the top part of the eardrum, particularly the back top part, that gets pulled inwards. And um, we call that a retraction. Now, the ear canal and the uh, eardrum is lined with uh, a layer of epidermal skin. As you can see here, this is a similar type of skin that we're repealing away. And this skin normally um, migrates out of the ear by itself. So as the skin dies, as it sheds, it moves sideways like a conveyor belt out of the ear. But when you've got this retraction pocket, all this dead skin, as it's shedding off the eardrum and ear canal, it falls into the, the retraction pocket and it then develops into a dead skin cyst. And this cyst is self growing, it germinates by itself and it just gets bigger and bigger. And then the cleshitoma, similar to mastoiditis, can go upwards towards the brain, so it can be life-threatening. It can go grow further inwards into the middle ear, so it can cause um, damage and decay of the ossicles, so the middle ear bones, uh, the cochlea, the facial nerves. So it can lead to Bell's palsy, so a drooping of one side of the face. Um, it can grow forwards in towards the jaw regions, so the TMJ area, so the temporal mandibular jaw joint, and. It, a cholesterol can also go into that antral region, into the mastoid bone, um, which I was describing earlier. Um, so quite often a masto uh, mastoidectomy uh, is performed in the presence of a cholesterol So that's to, uh, to ensure all of the cholesterol is fully removed. So by drilling out all the mastoid bone and uh, merging it with the ear canal, you've got full exposure of where, where that cholesterol can be. Um, the problem with the cholesterol, if you don't fully get all of it out, it, even if there's a little remnant left, that, that can then itself start uh, germinating itself, reproducing itself and growing and again, potentially being destructive and being very dangerous. So a canal wall down procedure is just to ensure full exposure is uh, provided of the ear so all of the cholesterol is removed. But 
the downsides of a, a canal wall down, um, so a ra- we call, let's call that a radical mastodectomy, is that obviously the ear canal's much, much wider. I'm not a big fan of watering the ear in a normal ear, but especially in a mastoid cavity, you've got to be so careful to avoid water. People can get dizzy as well because the balance organ is more exposed because the mastoid bone is drilled away. So especially in cold temperatures, they can get dizzy. And um, also with a canal wall down procedure, skin and earwax finds it much more difficult to escape because the skin doesn't migrate as well in the mastoid cavity. So you get a buildup of keratin like this patient has. So what I'm doing here actually is on the floor. This is in the ear canal, not the mastoid cavity. There's some crusted dead keratin on the floor of the ear canal. And I just want to remove that because this patient could also have a secondary external auditory canal cholesterol which is very rare. Um, so we just want to make sure there's no dead skin cyst here. Now, this doesn't look like there is one. There is a bit of an ulceration of the skin. So this dead keratin here has released some enzymes, proteolytic enzymes, which has partially ulcerated the floor of the skin. So this patient, again, needs medication. And they they do also see ENT um, not as regular. So I see this need to be examined a bit in more and more detail, but there's no prudent discharge from here. So I'm confident um, there's no necrosis of the underlying bone. Um, so I just wanted to get that out to get full exposure. Um, so yeah, so a radical mastodectomy has its pros and cons. And so in this case, the patient had it about 20, 30 years ago. So that's the eardrum. Uh, there's that little perforation that would appear. I, I think all the ossicles have been removed here, all the, the middle ear bones. Uh, it might have been diseased. So this eardrum has become pushed backwards. Um, so it's not only wider right to left, but I think it's a bit deeper as well. Um, and to the left is the ridge of the old ear canal. And again, I'm just trying to have a quick look inside. And I think all that mucodal discharge that I was removing earlier was coming out of that area. So you can see it's a bit damp. It's far better than when the patient came in. And, and I'm just going to do a bit of mopping around here and there. Got to be careful because with a mastoid cavity, in this, in this mastoid region where I am now, uh, when you're performing suctioning, it can um, lead to as I mentioned earlier, vertigo due to the caloric effects. The, one of, the organ of balance is made up of three semicircular canals and one of them in particular, the horizontal, also known as a lateral. Its, its presence is just um, in the mastoid cavity itself. It's not visible, but it's there. And when you've got that mastoid bone, obviously it's somewhat protected when we're performing microsuction, but in the absence of that mastoid bone, when I'm cleaning that area, um, the reduced temperature caused by microsuction can then lead to uh, the organ of balance uh, being inhibited uh, because of the cold temperature. The opposite is true. If the temperature is increased, the organ of balance becomes excited. And when it's inhibited, um, it's receiving less. Me- the brain's receiving less messages from that particularly the right ear in comparison to the left. So it tricks the brain to thinking you're moving, but you're not. And you experience vertigo and sometimes nausea and sickness. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And once again, thank you so much for all your lovely, kind uh, uh, and warm words. It means a lot.